Hi chemists, welcome to your choice on the unit menu, Mathematics and Chemistry. Make sure that while you're watching this video, you're taking notes and you also have your calculator that you'll be using on tests and quizzes handy because we'll be using it towards the end of this video. By the end of this video, you should be able to express numbers in scientific notation and long form, Perform calculations using your calculator with numbers expressed in scientific notation. Scientific notation is a shorthand way for writing very large or small numbers. And in chemistry, obviously, we're going to be more often than not working with some pretty large numbers, especially when we're talking about atoms and molecules, because in order to have a measurable amount, we need a lot of them. So that's why scientific notations really comes in handy for chemists. Scientific notation always includes two parts, the coefficient and the power of 10. Your coefficient is always going to be a number between 1 and 10. It can include 1, but not 10. And the power of 10 is always going to be an exponent of some kind. So the way that I explain it to my students is if your number is going to be greater than 1, then that's when you have a positive exponent. If your number is less than 1, that's when you're going to have a negative exponent. Another way to think about it is if you have a large number, that means that you have to be multiplying by something positive. If you have a small number, you have to be multiplying by something negative. So here's some examples. So I'm going to ask you to write the following numbers in scientific notation. You're more than welcome to um, watch me do a couple examples, and then you can try the rest on your own. Or if you want to follow along with me, you absolutely can. Either way, just make sure you're writing this practice down. So in the first example, it's 41,000. And in the number 41,000, there's no decimal point here because remember, we need a coefficient between one and 10. So the only way to get a coefficient between one and 10 is to put the decimal point in between the four and the one. But as I mentioned, there's no decimal point in this number. However, there is an imaginary one at the end. So if we move this imaginary decimal point, one, two, three, four decimal places to the left, our answer would be 4.1 times 10 to the fourth. Again, it's 4.1 because again, that's our coefficient and it's 10 to the fourth because we move the decimal point four places to the left. This number is also greater than one and that's why the exponent is positive. In the next example, this number is clearly um, less than one. And so in this case, we're absolutely going to see that our exponent is going to be negative but we still need to get that decimal point in between the two and the nine here. So we're gonna move this decimal point one, two, three decimal places to the right. So our coefficient's going to be 2.9, and then it's going to be times 10 to the negative three. And again, it's negative because this number is less than one. In the number 600,000, again, this decimal point's at the end, we're gonna move it one, two, three, four, five. So this will be six times 10 to the fifth, and then this number, I put the spaces in between here just to make it easier to see the zeros. So in this case, we still need to get that decimal point in between the one and the three. This number is definitely much less than one, so we're gonna have a negative exponent. So that means we're gonna have to move this decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that makes that our answer is going to be 1.32 times 10 to the minus seven. And then finally, for this number, again, this is a number much larger than one, imaginary decimal point at the end, we're gonna move this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew, that's a long, pretty big number. So this will be 1.23 times 10 to the eighth. So now it's calculator time. So I'm gonna ask you to try plugging these numbers in your scientific calculator. I'm gonna ask you to also put all numbers in scientific notation. So one warning, and my students go through this too, it seems that they always seem to have difficulty if they don't work with their calculators before the test or the quiz. So make sure whatever calculator you're using right now is something that you're gonna use on your test or quiz so you don't have a problem on the day of. So the first thing I want you to do before we jump into the examples is look on your calculator. Look at all the buttons. It should be a scientific calculator. So a scientific calculator has a lot more buttons than an arithmetic calculator. So you should first look for a button that says EE or EXP. So if you wanna pause the video, you can. If you do not have an EE or EXP button, 
and you do see something like this, this times 10 to the carat, that is totally fine. However, anything that you have a times 10 with the carat, you want to make sure that you put parentheses around your scientific notation every single time. It mostly has to do with the fact that um, order of operations will cause your calculator to um, do funky things if you don't have parentheses around it. So just make sure that you do that. So whatever method you choose, you still should get the right answer. So let's try some examples. So in this first example, if you're using the EE or EXP button, you want to type in the numbers 3.7 and then EE or EXP, depending on your calculator, and then 4. You are not going to type in times 10. So your calculator automatically assumes that it's times 10 whenever you use that EE or EXP button. So just to repeat myself, if you're using the EE or EXP button, you would type in 3.7, EE or EXP, 4. There's no need to put the times 10. You also do not need to put parentheses around it as well. And then you would hit the multiplication sign and then 7,000. For anybody that has to use times 10 with the caret, you would type in exactly what you see here. You'd have to put parentheses around it and just type in 3.7 and then your times 10 to the caret and then whatever exponent in this case it would be 4. Just make sure that you close the parentheses. So while you're doing this, make sure that you check to make, um, get the same answer that I'm getting here. If you're not, then you obviously want to ask your teacher for help. So you should get 2.59 times 10 to the 8th if you're doing this correctly. Let's try the next example. So you've got two numbers now in scientific notation. So you, if you were using the EE or EXP button, you're going to type in 8, and then EE or EXP, and then negative 4. Then you would hit the multiplication sign, and it would be 9 EE or EXP to the negative 4. Again, we are not including times 10 whenever we're using these EE or EXP buttons. If you were using, again, the times 10 to the caret, then you would absolutely need parentheses around those two numbers. If you do that calculation correctly, you should get 7.2 times 10 to the minus 7. And then finally, for this next calculation, again, you would type in 7, EE, and then 15. Again, no times 10. And then you would hit division sign, 8, EE e or EXP 5. If you are using the times 10 with a caret, you absolutely need parentheses around this division. So you would type in parentheses 7 and then times 10 to the caret and then 15, close that parentheses, division sign, and then um, open parentheses 8, again times 10 to the caret, 5, close the parentheses. And if you did that correctly, you should get 8.75 times 10 to the 9th. So I hope this video helped you not only be successful in learning how to write scientific notation, but also allowing you a chance to work with your calculator a little bit. As I mentioned previously, if you're having a hard time with your calculator, make sure you ask your teacher for help. You did a great job today. Thanks so much for watching.